70% of the world's population live in coastal zones. These ecosystems sustain life, not only for plants and animals that call this place home, but for humans as well. The coastal zone is one of the most biologically productive and economically productive zones of the world. The natural resources of the coastal ecosystems provide all the goods and services that support our society and our economy. But it's a problem because where the people are, that's where most of the impacts are. And so waste products, disturbance, habitat destruction are also concentrated in those areas. And it's up to us to try to understand how to better manage those resources and sustain them for future generations. 42.0 centimeters. 133. 1649. In 1965, the Smithsonian sent a group of scientists to an abandoned farm on the Chesapeake Bay, the nation's largest estuary. For nearly half a century, they have studied and measured what's happening to the ecosystems that live on the edge. Hi, I'm Tuck Hines. I'm the director and marine ecologist at the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center, or CERC as we call it. We're located on 2,650 acres of coastal ecosystems, farmlands, forests, wetlands, on the nation's largest estuary, Chesapeake Bay. We do research on land-sea interactions and the connected ecosystems right on the edge of the land and right on the edge of the ocean. We can do long-term research tracking environmental changes and human impacts in the area and trying to understand how we can manage these ecosystems in a more sustainable way for the future. When you're looking at coastal zones, it's important to realize that you're not just looking at one single ecosystem. You're looking at several. There are shallow water seagrasses, there are deep water zones, wetlands and marshes, forests, farmlands, and developed lands for cities and suburbs. All of these are part of the coast, and they all impact each other. So here we are in an upland forest. You don't usually think of these as being a part of the coastal ecosystem, but they're extremely important. Not only do they provide wonderful resources for us and habitat for animals, but they also provide things that we don't always see. They filter nutrients out. So nutrients that possibly we put into the ground for agriculture are picked up by forests and prevented from entering the water systems where they can cause a lot of damage. They also provide great soil erosion protection. The roots help hold that soil in place and keep it from entering the water. Beyond the forest, a marsh sits directly on the boundary between the land and the water, protecting both sides from the dangers of the other. On the terrestrial side, it acts as a water purifier, filtering out harmful chemicals before they reach the estuary. On the water side, it acts as a buffer against storms and floods. When excess water enters the marsh, the marsh is able to act like a sponge and absorb some of this water so that it causes less damage further inland. Life in coastal waters is very different than life in the open ocean. Because of all the pollution and sediments that are coming in off the land, they change the ecosystem drastically. Nutrient pollution from the land stimulates the growth of phytoplankton. This blocks light, keeping it from reaching submerged plants below. Oxygen levels swing drastically from day to night. Ocean acidification also reaches much higher levels than anything in the open sea. Three, one, two. Yeah, that's a lot. Invasive species from all over the world can also enter and disrupt the ecosystem. All of these factors make it very hard for organisms that live here, including many like oysters and crabs that we rely on for food. Plants and animals that live in coastal waters are forced to live in an environment that changes very rapidly. As humans, we make it even more challenging for these plants and animals to be able to survive. 145. One mission for scientists is to find out how much change these ecosystems can take. Perhaps the most important connection of all is the human connection. Almost every person in the world is connected with the coastal system because in the end, Everything from the land meets the sea. Some of it comes from rivers. Some of it comes through the atmosphere. Some of the debris and chemicals that enter the water have traveled hundreds or thousands of miles from their starting point. 
Tampa and coastal systems, everybody's downstream from somebody else. So everybody is helped by the resources that these ecosystems provide. And it's all of our responsibility to help maintain them and sustain them. So these are interconnected systems ecologically, but they're also interconnected economically and socially. We've seen as humans, we have enormous power to damage our environment. But this also means that we have the power to save it. We created this series of videos so that people can learn about the impacts that threaten coastal ecosystems and our research that can help lead to solutions. There's no specific order in which the videos are supposed to be viewed. We want people to explore them on their own. The most important thing to remember is that everything is connected. What you see happening to the land is going to be felt in the sea. And what the sea brings in will change life on the land. That's what it means to live on the edge.